The recent rise of Pokemon has brought many together, whether that be the revitalized resurgence of the Pokemon trading cards, which have been brought back in part to people like Funny Vlogman. What is up, guys? My name is Logan Paul, and there are 2,000 Pokemon players here in Central Park in the center of that circle playing Pokemon. I am going to play a prank and yell the name of a rare Pokemon that is not here. Let's see what happens. I am an asshole. Dragonite! It be, you know, Pokemon Sword and Shield, which obviously, you know, you can argue on Reddit all day whether which tree's graphic better resembles that of Majora's Mask. But, I mean, the, those games did bring a lot of new people to Pokemon. But, <laughs> let's face it, boys, Pokemon, despite the recent rise in popularity, has fallen hard from grace in the last couple years. Um, at a time where many people are stuck inside, though, people are just wanting the simpler times to return. And those simpler times, usually, you know, we look back, we look back at the days of, like, Game Boy Color staying up late, reading a good comic book, you know, comic books, boomer, haha, -ha funny. <laughs> but your local comic book store, you know, most local comic book stores, you know, they're probably, they're probably a fucking Wendy's or something at this point, right? But, but hear me out, hear me out, guys. Let's say, let's say for a moment, right, you walk into your local comic book store, you see this epic gaming magazine, fanzine, from the 1980s with a silly Dig Dug arcade doodle on it. You know, you don't think much about it, bro. I don't think most people would. Unless you're Ken Sugimori, freaking art designer of the Pokemon universe, who says, Hell yeah, man, I love fanzines, let me hop right on this shit. Or at least that's that's how I picture it, at least. That's how I, I picture it went down. For those who don't know what I mean, Ken Sugimori is the creator of the original art designs for the 151 uh, original Pokemon. And a lot of people don't know this, but Ken Sugimori actually, you know, the, the entire Pokemon lore, the memes, Pokemon in general, all kind of came to be over Ken Sugimori, you know, wandering his local comic book st store on a quiet afternoon in a Japanese magazine shop. Ken Sugimori would team up with the person who drew this fanzine and would create a, a magazine company, as they would brand it, called Game Freak, where they would go on to produce lots of different, you know, fanzines. And the definition of a fanzine, if you don't know what it is, is basically kind of an amateur magazine art design or amateur magazine development essentially so it's basically just like an amateur magazine company eventually though the two would go on to you know really you know love gaming and pitch an idea for a arcade game they had planned out to namco and namco you know while being skeptical they decided to go with it and this would be the first ever jump into actual game deve development for the Game Freak Company. They would start out very small. They would start out like, and when I say very small, I mean like crazy small. They would start out with Mendel's Palace. And you know, Men <laughs> Mendel's Palace is like, and while, you know, serving to really build their initial audience, Mendel's Palace would really not be much of a, kind of a mediocre arcade game, beat em up style of game. But it did perform fairly well, uh, originally, when it was produced. But you guys aren't here for Mendel's Palace. I know exactly what you guys are here for. You guys are here for Yoshi, made by Nintendo, the funny puzzle game. Yeah, Yoshi. Bro, Yoshi was actually made by Game Freak. Pretty epic. I actually didn't know this for a long time, but apparently Game Freak developed Yoshi... The funny NES arcade game where you... It's basically like, it's Dr. Mario, right? But it's its Yoshi. I didn't even know they made that game. I think, I think for a lot of us, the appeal of funny monster game is just the sense of discovery you get along the way. At a time where, where gaming, gaming was really restricted, a uh, funny monster game really did open up a lot of customization. And just overall, you know, have fun. You could discover this whole world. I think a lot of us can relate though, you know, being young, not really knowing what what really to do in the world. You know, there's a lot of restriction and Pokemon, you know, it offered, if it offered us a game where 10-year-old boy 
uh, Ash Ketchum could go out and conquer the world. I think that's a really cool, cool message early on for a lot of people. I just think it's cool though that the uh, the Pokemon Game Freak company started out as a, a magazine, you know, amateur magazine designer company. A lot of people, you know, they shame on like, you know, making your own card game, making your own whatever. But like, that's exactly how Pokemon started out was just making, you know, meme magazines of their favorite uh, arcade games and it took off and, you know, it, it got Namco to notice and it's just kind of cool how that all works out. So I think if you ever have a dream, uh, no dream is too big. And I think that definitely shows in Pokemon, a game where you, you, you really just aspire to be the greatest trainer in the land. And I think it's just the overall good comparison. I don't know what else to say for this video. It, it's kind of deep, but peace.